In one of the live classes, one of my students asked, what do I think of Black 3.0? I'd never even heard of it. So I went ahead and I bought a bottle of it. So we'll give it a bash, compare it with all the different blacks that I've got on hand. And we'll see what's the difference. So I usually use Mars Black and I usually use Payne's Grey. So I did see at my supplier another black, so I thought I'll get it. We can test that one as well. I've never used it before. It's called Carbon Black. It sounded like he was going to be really dark, so what the heck, we'll give him a bash. And then here's the, the Black 3.0. It comes in a little tube like that. And this is the actual, the actual bottle. So it is an acrylic paint. So I'll be testing it against acrylic paints. And then also I often mix my own blacks. So we'll do that test as well to see how do they stack up against the board blacks. So we'll do two tests in one. All right, so I'm gonna start off with the, the Mars black. I'm going to paint these colors straight out the tube without any thinning down or anything like that. No water added. And I'll give it a decent coating as well. So that we make sure that the canvas itself is fully covered. And we get a nice solid color. So usually I take the Mars black, which is for me more like a, a brown black. So if I'm looking for a brown biased black then I'll use that because you find that all blacks aren't the same that's why I've got two different blacks that I always use alrighty so the next one is Payne's Grey I'll often use the Payne's Grey so for him he's got a blue bias to him so if I'm looking for a a blue biased black then I'll always go for the Payne's Grey so let's paint him in and see how he looks so between each one, I am washing the brush and drying him off as best I can to make sure that he's not going to affect the final color. I'm also smoothing out the paint at the end to make sure that you get a nice even coating and we don't have, we have as little as possible brush strokes affecting the final color. Can you see that one's got a bit more of a brown versus that one over there? Alrighty. Next up is the carbon black. I've never used him, so let's see what he looks like. I just figured I've seen it in the shop. I always wanted to try it and see what he looks like. And this is the, the perfect time to do that. Maybe he's an awesome black and he becomes my new favorite. Who knows? Carbon conjures up images of really dark blacks, eh? It seems like a, a a pretty dark black. To be honest, I think he's possibly darker than the other two. He's definitely more of a, a black black. So when I was at the at the art store, they did have other blacks, all biased towards different colours. Blue blacks and green blacks and brown blacks and so on. You can see what it looks like there on the in the in inset photo. You can see what that looks like. So I didn't bother buying them because obviously they, they're not going to be as dark as possible. And that's what we're trying to compare now at the moment, which which black is the, the blackest. <laughs> and uh, a blue black or a green black would have a distinct bias and have a green look to it. So you couldn't be the darkest black possible. I quite like this black. It's really, really nice and dark, definitely. So that one is now starting to dry. So his true color is starting to come up nicely now. Okay, so the next black I want to try is one where you mix the three primary colors together. So the idea there is the way your eye sees color is from the sun or a globe, you've got all the colors of the rainbow, which together form a white light. 
So then that light hits, say, that blue over there. So that blue color absorbs all the colors of the rainbow except its own, and it only reflects that, that color back to your eye. And that's how you see it as a blue. And that one absorbs all the colors except that specific red, and it reflects that back to your eye. And then you see it as red. So the maths behind that is, is that if you add this one, this one, and this one together, your three primaries, then it will cancel each other out and no light will be reflected back to your eye. So the ratio that I always say is you take four parts blue, and I usually say use French ultramarine, and a cadmium red, so you use two parts cadmium red, in other words, half that amount over there, and then one part yellow, in other words, half the amount that you used for the red. And, and that's a ballpark figure. You'd always have to adjust that because the three, prim the three colors that you're using may not be pure primaries. So when you mix them together, it may not give you that full-on black. It may be biased towards the, the red or the blue, usually. And ironically, more often than not, it's biased towards the red, as you can see over there. So then you just have to adjust it. So I'll be generous here. Well, let's add a lot more blue. I'm going to try and just get it as dark as what I can. All right, so what I've got there now is a really dark purple. So that tells me I still need to add more yellow to it. It's quite counterintuitive. You'd never think to add yellow to get a black. But it does. It does now just absorb that last little bit of light. Yeah, that's good. All right. So let's go and paint that on. So I can see it's not quite as dark as as the the other blacks, and mine does still seem to have a bit of a, a bit of a blue bias to it. But it's quite dark. It's quite dark. Let's make sure it's got a nice solid coating. All right, and then the next mixture that I use often is where you mix your own Payne's Gray, and you do that by taking the raw umber and the French ultramarine and you mix them together 50-50. So let's do that. And that. So on the palette it looks nice and dark. Eh? It does have a bit of a a bit of a blue bias, you could probably adjust it slightly, but I think I'm happy with that. Usually when I'm painting, I don't sweat the small stuff to try and get it as black as I possibly can. You just want to get it dark, and that's always close enough to a black. Okay, so this next one here is... Raw Umber plus... French Ultramarine. Yeah, it does seem to be nice and dark. Definitely blacker than the than the three primaries. And it seems to have a better coverage than the than the three primaries. So it'll be quite interesting to test him against the, the bought panes grey. He has as good covering power as any of the bought ones. With the three primary ones I did have to Give him just a little bit of a thicker layer of paint. Alrighty, so let's dry that off. And then we'll add the whole row of black 3.0 below that so that we can compare them all against each other. Alrighty, so let's take the black 3.0, squeeze a dollop down there and see what it looks like. So 
wet. It looks like this. I can see he's, he's, he is a bit blacker than the rest, slightly, but not significantly. So let's see what happens when we paint him on. So going on, I can see he is darker. So the claim it, it, it absorbs 99% of light. So that's as good as as good as all light. Oh, let's run him across there, and we can start to see the difference. It's definitely darker, no doubt about it. But I think we'll only fully see once we've got this blocked in and the paint is dried. Because I think half the problem with getting your paint as dark as possible is having the paint be matte. You see all these other colors here, they're, they're reflecting the light and that makes them look less black. We'll move the canvas around in a minute and then you'll be able to see the difference when there's less, less or more light reflecting off it. Also makes a difference whether the color looks dark or not. But at, even now, with all that paint dry and this wet, I can already see it's definitely darker. So let's blast him with a hair dryer and see how it goes. Alrighty. Yeah, he's gone well dark. Really, really dark. There is a little bit of streakiness here. And I think that's just because he needs another, another coat of paint. There's a bit of a bit of paper shining through. I can see it's it's very matte. Let's lift this canvas up a bit. So do we try and get as little reflection on, on these colours as possible? I think about there, right? Now I'm not really seeing just a little bit of reflections on on that one. Yeah, it's probably about as good as I'm going to get it. Having no, as little reflections as possible. So if we take a look at, at these guys over here, the raw umber and the carbon black seem pretty close to each other. The three primaries, yeah, maybe you needed a bit more, uh, maybe a bit of a darker uh, blue instead of the, the ultramarine that I've got, that would have given you maybe a bit of a better or a darker black over there. The Payne's Grey is pretty cool. Hey, look at that. He's nice and black. And so is the, the Mars Black. He's got a bit of a, a bit of a brownie tinge to it. You can see he's got a little bit of a bluey tinge and he's quite a neutral, closer to a black black. If I compare it with, with a black 3.0, is definitely the his, his name lived up to the color yeah but there's i mean you can clearly see the the black 3.0 is clearly much darker especially when you get to this situation here where the where the other blacks are glossy and and this is matte so it's clearly a, a dark much much darker color so i think what the heck let's give this guy another coat just to see what it will look like without those without those streaks. So the second coat shouldn't take as much paint. It'll just be a quick little going over, eh? Yeah. Now can you see what happens the minute that this this guy is shiny? He's not. It doesn't appear as dark anymore. So being matte is is a big part of it. So let's do that before that dries on us. Let's lift him up and see. How he compares like that with the other ones. So it's quite comparable to the other ones, eh? Then now he's starting to look more like the paint's grey. Right, let's continue blocking that in. So as before, just a nice thin even coat. Okay, let's dry that off. Oh my word. Yeah, now that's pretty insane, isn't it? Now we've got a really dramatic difference. Now that this isn't streaky, I think that initial coat wasn't... Uh, it wasn't solid enough but now we've got a, a really distinct difference see even even holding it up to there it's a huge difference so definitely black 3.0 he lives up to his uh his claim that's the blackest black i've ever seen well there you have it black 3.0 definitely lives up to its name so if you're looking for the darkest black you've ever got you ever want you're gonna go for that black 3.0 but i think just bear in mind that it is matte so the matte won't always work in all situations 
So if I look at the other blacks that we've got here, um, and if you're looking for a really dark black, but you don't mind that little bit of gloss to, to go with the rest of the painting, is the, the Payne's Grey was that bluey black and the carbon black. The carbon black was great. Having said that, that raw umber and French ultramarine 50-50 mix was as dark almost as the carbon black. So he's a good replacement for that. Then you don't have to go out and add that that extra black tube in your in your in your mix of paints. But yeah, we don't use black that often, so if you want to get the carbon black, yeah, why not? Go ahead and do it. So also now having said that, uh, because it's matte. You can't varnish your your painting if you're going to use this this 3.0. Okay, and if you do, you're going to have to varnish all the way around the black and leave that black matte. Otherwise, you're just going to lose that dark um, effect that you that you've got from using the black 3.0. Oh, well, there you go. Now you know. See you next time.